Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film my TBR talk check-in thing for the end of March and the book haul. That These are the books that I brought into my home in the month of March. So for my TBR check-in, I read, um, here's my balance sheet here. So I read nine books off my shelf in March. I brought in 11 books. <laughs> I unhauled one book and that leaves me with a plus one. So my total books on my TBR shelves right now is 142 books. So that's not too bad. Not too bad. Plus one when you're bringing in 11 books in a month is not terrible. Um, so let's talk about what are the new books that I brought in this month. So one book is a book that I ordered back in December and has just finally arrived and that is World of Wonders in Praise of Fireflies, Whale Sharks and Other Astonishments by Amy Nazuka Matadal. Um, you've heard me rave about this book. It was the book naturalist selection for January. So I've already read this book. So this book does not count against me. Yay. Um, and then, uh, milk. so that is a Milkweed Editions book. Um, here's the little symbol right there. Um, and then Milkweed had a um, sale. They had a sale. Um, <laughs> so I could not resist. I picked up a bunch of books that are on the... Um, on the schedule to read for book naturalists later in the year and plus some other books that I am interested in that they have published. So for the book naturalist book club, um, and I don't remember which months and I didn't prepare very well, but the list is available um, on the book naturalist Instagram account at book naturalists if you want the whole list for the whole year. Um, but this is canoeing with Jose by John Lurie. And this is about canoeing on the northern boundary waters between the U.S. and Canada. Um, and I believe um, this is also an Indigenous story. So, uh, I mean, an Indigenous memoir. So I am very much excited to read more about that. Look, there's a map in the book. Um, so this is like, uh, I'm not familiar with this area at all, but it's like Lake Manitoba, Lake Winnipeg, um, down the Red River. So I think that's going to be really great. Um, then there is a poetry collection on the schedule. This is Tethered to the Stars by Fady Jowda. And this is um, poetry about astronomy and, uh, you know, about things seen in the microscope and the telescope and sometimes even the horoscope. His gaze lingers on the interior space of a lung, on a butterfly poised on a filament, on the moon temple atop Huana Pichu, on a dismembered live oak. So that sounds delightful. Um, and that's what it looks like on the inside. So that will be happening later in the year as well. Um, this beautiful, <laughs> look at this cover. This is gorgeous. This is The Seed Keeper by Diane Wilson. And this is a novel. Um, it says, on a snowy winter's day, Rosalie Ironwing returns to the home from which she was taken as a child. Yeah. So it's about, um, it's about a farming family and trying to save seeds um, and protect seeds for the future from uh, de destruction by a predatory chemical company. So that sounds <laughs> like really up my alley. So those were all for the Book Naturalist Book Club. Um, I did pick up another book that Doris has read previously from Milkweed Editions and which I thought sounded really awesome. And that's Late Migrations by Margaret Rankle. And this is sort of um, grief memoir mixed with nature writing. Um, again, just stunning cover. Um, and everybody loves this book. Everybody that I know that's read this book just loves it. And it has these beautiful illustrated plates in throughout that like sort of uh, intersperse the essays. Um, so I think that is gorgeous. And then the last book I picked up from Milkweed Editions is Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. I was recommended this novel um, by an Indigenous Canadian writer by a couple of different people, I believe. Um, maybe Janet Remembered Reads and probably Sean, the book maniac. Um, but this is... Uh, about an indigenous family trying to protect their child from having to go to residential school, I believe. Um, yeah, it, 
which is going to be a difficult topic to read about. But um, from everything I've heard, this is a very, very good novel. So that was my Milkweed Editions haul. And then um, I was sent as a, uh, a gift from one of the people that I follow and who follows me on Instagram, this lovely um, book. And this was sent to me from Rachel. And she lives out in Utah, which, and she sent me all these cool things inside the package that are from her state. So like beautiful places in Utah. I've never been to Utah, but it's on my bucket list. So, and I'm extremely excited to have this copy of Naturalist, a graphic adaptation um, of uh, Edward O. Wilson's life. And so I love Edward O. Wilson. Um, his book, The Diversity of Life, basically changed my life when I read it in college. And um, so I'm fascinated by everything to do with Edward O. Wilson, everything about him. He's just a preeminent uh, naturalist and um, professor and writer uh, about ecology. And so I am really, really excited to get to this graphic memoir, uh, graphic biography. I don't know if this is a graphic biography or a graphic... It must be biography, not memoir, because it's not written by Edward O. Wilson, right? I'm not exactly sure always to what to call nonfiction that's written in the graphic format. Um, so this was adapted by Jim Ottoviani, Otto, Otto Biani, and the art is by C.M. Butzer. Yeah. So I will know more about it once I've read it, but look at Oh my God, look at these end pages. Look at those. That is so cool. Anyway, thank you very much, Rachel. I am thrilled to have this copy and I am excited to get to it. Then I actually went to a bookstore. Yes, last weekend I went to a bookstore, you know, wearing my mask and all that. And I picked up three books while I was there. Um, one is a book that I've heard about from Doris and some other folks on booktube and this is The Feather Thief, Beauty, Obsession, and the Natural History Heist of the Century by Kirk Wallace Johnson. And this is about a man who steals um, rare feathers from museums because he's obsessed with fly tying, I believe. Um, so yeah, crazy just crazy and I've heard really great things about this sort of adventure nonfiction, uh adventure nature writing nonfiction. so which I love very much and then I picked up this book The Deficit Myth Modern Monetary Theory and the Birth of the People's Economy by Stephanie Kelton I first heard about this book um from Justin over at the Ghost Reader he did a review on this book I think last summer when it first came out and this is all about debunking the idea that the deficit, the national federal deficit is something that we should be in a panic about. Um, Stephanie Kelton in this book debunks a bunch of theories about why, um, why the federal government and how the federal government operates its budget is different than how we operate our own individual household budgets and even how um, state and municipal budgets are dealt with because the federal government makes the money. They issue their own money. They are in charge of their own money. And that money is not tied to any particular, um, like it's not tied to gold anymore. We gave up the gold standard a while ago. Um, and so the money is backed by other things, less uh, intangibles, I guess you would say, um, but also some tangibles. And so she is like basically explaining why we shouldn't be in a panic about the federal deficit. Um, and I actually had started reading this. I had gotten a copy. Um, I was reading the ebook from Scribd, but I was taking so many notes that I was like, I'm going to write the whole book over again. I just need to buy the physical copy so I can highlight and annotate and all that stuff. And I'm really um, excited to, I had read the first chapter, so I'm, I may start right back from the beginning again and like do my whole annotation bit with this. Um, but very excited to have this one. And then last but not least is a book I picked up um, for Aussie April. And this is Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. I believe this was just shortlisted for the Stella Prize, for, uh, Stella Prize in Australia. And it is also on um, the BookTube Prize long list. Um, and so I am thrilled to be reading this book. I'm going to be reading this book in April. That's why I picked it up. Um, and uh, I think it's another gorgeous cover um, and you know I like everything about marine life so excited to read this particular 
piece of science nonfiction um, in the month of April for Aussie April. So that's it. Those are the books I brought into my home in the month of March. Um, I hope that you have all found some good books to read lately, um, and I will talk to you later.